Today, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest requests I get, and that is taking folks through step by step how I create my tone models. I've had so many people tell me how much they enjoy the tones I'm getting out of Tonex, and they want to know the process I use, and I'm going to do that today. There's been so much confusion around this, especially in terms of talking about the instrument input level or the global input trim on Tonex pedal, and I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be as complicated as it's been made out so we're going to go through this today, put everything to rest. It's going to be a long one. I'm going to have everything time stamped at the bottom. I may repeat myself a lot because there's certain points that really need repeating for emphasis so folks really understand it. But I do think if you can get through this whole video, you're going to have a much better understanding of how this all works and why I work the way I do, which is, spoiler alert, quite different than is suggested by the Tonex software. So step number one is I'm going to take you through setting your instrument input level properly. I've already done a video about this and I'm going to point to that video that you should probably watch first. Also setting your reamp output level so that it is representing what is coming into the audio interface. This is so wildly important. I did a video almost a year ago now warning folks about not get falling trap into this raising your instrument level up to clipping and backing it off and then changing it for each guitar. In that video I talked about representing your guitar in the most realistic fashion and that was in relation to other guitars, so we're not always chasing an instrument input level and changing that so we can get consistent results. Then once we've set our levels, we never have to touch them again. We're good to go. We can get on with the modeling process, which is going to be a little bit different than how you may have been doing it if you've been listening to Tonex software. Then later in the video, I'm going to show you audio examples that prove that doing it the way I do it is every bit as accurate as doing it the way that is suggested by Tonex, except it's going to be much easier because you're not going to constantly be having to change your instrument input level up and down depending on the guitar you're using. For today's captures, I'm going to be using my brand new Lurkst Omega hand-wired amp through its matching 212 cabinet. I gotta say, this is an incredible amp I've just recently received after NAM. It's Alex Lifeson's signature amp, and I have to say, it is just spectacular. I do have a set of new tone models available at my website at the link below if you're so inclined and you want to help support my channel. Later in the video, I'll play you a demo video of those tones used together in a mix, and I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's get on with things and start talking first and foremost about getting the right levels going in and out of our audio interface so that we can have really great tone model captures. So let's make sure that our instrument level is set properly on our audio interface. And the way I'm going to set it is very different than what is suggested when creating a Tonex tone model. The conventional wisdom, we'll call it, was always to take whatever guitar you're playing, crank the instrument level up to the point of almost clipping and then backing it off to maximize signal to noise ratio. To me, this has always just been a solution looking for a problem. It doesn't really make any sense to do this. I want to set that level so that it represents what is the real world situation of what is coming out of that guitar. And when I phrase it like that, some people get confused. I phrase it like that in that video I did almost a year ago, warning against this cranking of the input level and changing it for each guitar. When I refer to it as representing the real signal that's coming out of the guitar, I'm talking about in relation to each guitar you may own or may use. I don't want this guitar to have the same output as this guitar. This is my Vigier Expert Strat style guitar with single coil pickups, fairly low output. And this is my Vigier Excalibur guitar with a DiMarzio Tone Zone humbucking pickup in the bridge. Now, obviously those pickups are gonna sound different one single coil, one's humbucker, but part of their sound is that this is going to be higher output than this one. If I plug this into an amp, it's going to cause the amp to react very different than if I plug this guitar into it. If I'm always chasing that instrument level up and down, getting it close to clipping and backing it off for this guitar, this guitar is going to overload that input. So then I back it off and now whatever guitar DI I capture with this is going to be much higher output in relation to this compared to the real world. And that's what I was referring to when suggesting to set your instrument level input in a realistic fashion and capture how the guitars would behave in real life. 
in relation to one another. I have a video up here somewhere. This is the one you should watch first. I go very in depth in exactly how to dial your instrument input in so that there's no guesswork. You're going to have the same results regardless of interface you use and it's going to be repeatable. So now let's talk about the reamp output level, which is every bit as important when capturing Tonex tone models. Okay, so now that we understand how our input levels should be set, and as I've mentioned, I set mine so that when my instrument input is fed with a zero dBU signal or a 0.775 volt or 775 millivolt signal, it's going to read as minus 11 dBFS inside my DAW. So what I need to do now is make sure that coming out of the line output that I'm going to use to feed my reamp box, that when I send out a minus 11 dBFS signal, that that is going to be hitting the front of my amplifier with the same amount of level. That means that basically when I plug into my instrument input, and then record whatever I record guitar-wise, I can rest assured that when I reamp that, that's going to be coming back out at the exact same signal that it went in at. So what goes in must come out the same, and it's going to react in that realistic, real-world way that I've discussed before in previous videos. So what you'll see is here, I've created a little track that is my mono out that I'm utilizing for my reamping, and I've put a little test generator on that you see right here. I've set it to a sine wave at 400 hertz. The reason 400 hertz I explained in the previous video on setting your input levels. That's because that's the upper end of the frequency my multimeter is going to be accurate at. And I've set the output to minus 11 dB. So that when I look over here on my meter, I am getting minus 11 dBFS right here on this output. So I am feeding what is equivalent to the minus 11 dBFS signal that I've put in with my guitar. That's where it's set to capture it at. So now we want to check out how that looks when we take that cable. And here is the cable I'm using for this purpose. Hope it's on camera there. And I'm going to hook this up to my multimeter as such. And then what you'll see on the multimeter is we will have a reading. So now this is reading the level that is coming out of my line output on my audio interface that I am going to be utilizing for reamping purposes. You'll notice it's reading very high. I'm aiming here for 0.775 volts. So I don't want to change this because this is matched to what I am putting in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my audio interface output trim setting and I'm going to take the line three output which I'm using and watch what happens when I bring back that back one, that voltage drops, I bring it back two, it drops again. Now I bring it back three, and you notice it drops again. I bring this back four. Now I'm at 0.751 or 0.75. Now that's a little low, but you gotta remember now what we're going to do is we'll start there. And what this is going to do is allow me to know that I'm feeding very close to a zero, zero dBU signal into my reamp box, which in this case, I'm using the really wonderful Tonex capture box, which has worked really wonderfully for me. So let's take this cable now and we're gonna plug that into Tonex capture and then measure what's coming back out the other side of Tonex capture. So now I've plugged into my Tonex capture box. So I'm feeding that 0.75 volt signal into Tonex capture. Let's see now, I have my cable that I'm gonna to feed to my amp coming out of Tonex capture, and I'm going to hook it up in the same way as I did the previous cable. And we now see that we are getting too low a signal because it's now reading 0.681, so we're losing a little something in that capture box. Now, as I've mentioned in many other videos, the attenuation on the front of the Tonex capture box, I leave at full, I don't touch it, just because it's not an easy knob to calibrate. There's no indent positions that I can go to, and you'll notice as I move it up and down, I can adjust the voltage. I'm keeping that on full. So what I'm gonna come back and do is revisit my little line three output here. I'm gonna move that back up to minus three. Now, here we go, we're at 0.764, 0 0.765. Let's just, for easy math here, say it's 0 0.010 or 0 0.011 millivolts off. Now, somebody might say, aha, that's not going to work. Well, you may think that, and I wish that I had here on my line three out a way to be able to fine tune this to, you know, maybe a tenth of a dB, but I don't, unfortunately. The thing about this is, this is simply, and let's just move this off screen, this is simply going to equate to a 
two dBU difference, I believe. So if I come in here and change this from minus 11 to minus 10.8, oops, I'm sorry, minus 10.89, yeah, I believe, or... Or 10.88. So it equates to a difference here. And if we come back to our minus 11, if you notice here, I could come over here and boost this by 0.12 dB. And then I get to my 0.775. The reason I don't concern myself with that, that 0.12 dB boost is not going to be audible. Nobody is going to be able to tell the difference. It's sometimes even hard to tell the difference between a 1 dB boost, to be quite honest with you. So if somebody usually sets their audio interface so that a 0 dBU signal feeding the instrument input equals minus 12 dB FS, that's going to sound eerily similar to the captures that I make. So once we've done this, I now know that I have my system calibrated so that what is going into it, where I always leave my audio interface instrument input set, which is far from this thing I've talked about in the past, which is crank it up to clipping and then back it off a bit for each guitar. It doesn't make sense to me. It's just a terrible way to work in my opinion. So if I can set this once at this minus 11 dB, which gives me plenty of headroom for every guitar I have. Now, I'm also not saying that there's no guitar on the planet that won't clip that because you have active pickups and you have very high output pickups. But I'm going to say that for the vast majority of guitars, this is going to be enough headroom. But if it isn't, then maybe you want to work at a slightly different setting that's going to allow you more headroom. And you might say, well, then how am I going to be able to use your Tonex captures accurately? There's going to be a simple solution to this using the game knob later in the video. So I hope that that was clear. And now that we understand this part of it, we can get on to actually going through and making the capture. All right, so here we are over in Tonex. We're going to now want to create a tone model going through the steps. And this is the part of the process that a lot of people have asked me about. But really, this part of the process is going to be very confusing if we haven't done what I just showed you and getting our entire instrument input and reamp output balanced so that we basically have what is going in is coming out and we're going to have great success with making very accurate captures. And I'm going to give you audio examples later in the video. All right, so we come over to our modeler and we see that we have this list of steps we're going to go through. Welcome to Tonex Machine Modeler. The setup guide will walk you through each step of the tone modeling process. It's designed to help you make the proper connections and get the best quality tone model possible. All right, let's move on from that. So instrument selection, obviously today we are using guitar. I am a guitar player, so we're gonna go with that. Now I come over here. Now tone model type, I can choose either an amp and a cab, which is what we're going to use today. We can have a complex rig, which is going to be an amp or a combo. So an amp head and a speaker cabinet or a combo with some sort of drive pedal in front of it. We could capture just a DI of a stomp or the DI of just the amp with no speaker. Now these are going to be different setups. I might talk about that in a different video because it's going to be slightly different setup for what we have to do. Uh, or we can do stomp and amp with no speaker cabinet. So these ones here at the end are gonna be more what I consider DI direct captures and these are going to include a speaker cab in them. So these ones here will sound quite awful if we don't have some sort of speaker simulation after the fact. We're gonna choose amp and cab today. And you'll notice up down here it says model and amp head and cabinet or a combo by using one or two microphones. I'm going to be using one microphone today. We click next. Now we get into where we have to set things up here. Now I'm using a Motu Ultralight Gen 5 audio interface, great audio interface, lots of ins and outs, perfect for my studio, nice and compact and really like it, sounds great as so many audio interfaces do nowadays. So what we have here first is we're gonna look at where we have our guitar plugged into. And I have this set into that number one input, which is going to be a mic line instrument combination, but this is set to instrument. As I've already talked about, I have this set as far as input level, so that when it's fed with a zero dBU signal or the 0.775 volt signal, it's going to equate to minus 11 dBFS within my DAW. Then I want the send to the rig to go to my reamp box, and this is a little Tonex capture box, to go out line output three, which is the one I've already set up in the previous step. So that's gonna to go to my reamp box, that's gonna send the signal out to my amplifier. Now I'm miking my amplifier with one microphone, and I actually have it going into microphone two. 
two instead of microphone one. But I could have two microphones on there as well. Uh, I have two nice mic preamps currently in my rack here that I kind of alternate between, but I really use one more than the other. And that's going to be my Cranbourne Audio Camden 500 mic preamp. It's a really nice preamp because it can do everything from very clean to very colored. And I also have kind of a Neve style mic pre as well. And that's on line in five. That's just the way I have things, Rhoda. Yours is obviously going to be different. But I want to remember that I'm going to be utilizing line in six mostly for this. So I can have this set up like this. And then uh, you can see this is where we set our actual audio interface and we can pull up the control panel for it. And we can also basically hit this and choose what audio interface we want. And then we have our monitor outputs, right? So we have main out one and main out two, which is how I am feeding my iLoud precision monitor. So once that's set up, we're all good to go. Obviously your settings are going to be slightly different here compared to mine. We hit next. Now, this is where it gets interesting, okay? It says levels check, step one, input level. Adjust the input level of your instrument. Connect your instrument to a high impedance input on your audio interface. Strum your instrument and adjust the input gain until the meter reaches yellow without clipping. Here's where the first problem is, and this is where so much confusion comes from. This isn't actually part of the capturing process. Uh, we could have our input level set to whatever we have it set to. It's not going to affect the outcome of the tone model capture. What it is going to do is paint us into a corner that whatever level we set here, we are going to have to continually hit that tone model with that same amount of input level, or it's going to sound undergained. And this is where a lot of the confusion came from in the beginning. And let me show you what happens here. I'm going to grab my Vigier Expert Strat style guitar. And what you're going to see here is that when I strum this, it tells me to please raise the input gain, even if I hit really hard. I'm hitting that way harder than I ever would, and it's just not giving me the amount of gain. Now, to get this up to the amount of gain that's needed, I'm going to go over to my audio interface and do what it's telling me. Okay, so you see now... It's telling me I'm sort of correct. Let's go up one more dB. You see, I get periodic red lights, but I, I'm thinking this is probably where it's asking us. Compared to my carefully calibrated instrument input level, I've had to add 11 dB of gain to my instrument input, okay? Now, here's the issue with this. If I was to grab a different guitar, now I've got my Vigier Excalibur with a DiMarzio Tone Zone pickup in the bridge. Watch what happens here. Even when I strum lightly, I am maxing this out. Now, here is the problem again, more evidence of this issue of grabbing a guitar, turning your instrument input level up to the point of clipping and then backing it off. I don't want my Strat style guitar to have the same output level as my Vigier Excalibur, which has higher output. I want those guitars to retain their uniqueness. Again, this is why I referred in my video about not cranking your input level up to capturing the guitar signal in a realistic fashion. That was speaking in relative terms between guitars. If I am going to set my level for this guitar, then this tone model is going to expect that level to sound right. And if I set it for my Strat, it's going to exist. So we're always going to be chasing things around. The method that I am showing today is you're going to go with your already carefully calibrated instrument input and reamp output so that you never have to touch that again. You can just plug in different guitars into the tone model. It's just going to work the way that you intended. And as I'm going to show later in the video, it's going to sound identical to plugging straight into the guitar amp. So I'm going to go back and simply move my gain back to where I always have it set, even with this higher output guitar, well, let's see what happens. It's still telling me to raise the input gain, although it is closer because this guitar is much higher output. So now that we know if we've calibrated our instrument input level to a place that we are always going to use it, something with enough headroom to handle all of our guitars, and we know what that number is, we can skip this step. Don't worry about it. Don't change any of this. It's not going to have any bearing on how the tone model comes out. It's only going to have bearing on what this tone model is going to expect. Now we move to the next step. It says levels check. Step two, send level. So now it says adjust the send level from your audio interface to your rigs. Drum your instrument and adjust the attenuation on your reamp blocks or the analog output level on your audio interface. 
we've already done this, right? I've already set that output level to know that it's exactly what I have going in. So there's no need to do this either. Adjust levels until your rig sounds the same as when plugged directly into your rig. If necessary, plug your instrument directly into your rig for comparison. The issue with this is you're not going to really remember if it sounds identical or not. Our ears can be a very fickle thing and tell us a lot of lies. And that's something that blind tests in audio will show us over and over again. So instead, what I've already done is calibrated, as I've showed, a very specific instrument input level, and then what goes in must come out. So the exact same level coming back out. So I know that without touching this analog attenuation, I've already done that over here on my line three output by setting this at minus three. And we've got, like I said, we have our output within 0.12 dB in comparison to plugging straight into our guitar amp. So again, I don't touch, as I've mentioned before, and I've talked about, I don't touch that analog attenuation control on the front of my Tonex capture box. Okay, I move on next. Now, this step is very important. Levels check step three, return levels. Adjust the return levels, make sure your instrument is plugged into input one. And, that, and the reason it says input one is because I've already told Tonex that input one is what I'm using. If I have gone back here and switched this to instrument two, then the little number afterwards would be on a two. So it knows what you've told it already and it's telling you that make sure your instrument is plugged into input one because this is and again that's not going to actually have anything to do with the capture process the instrument input is just going to be for auditioning the final product it says either play your instrument or play back the included samples through your rig while adjusting input five gain on your audio interface adjust the level so the meter reaches yellow without clipping repeat that for input six now i'm not using input one i don't have that mic'd up so i'm just going to mute that and i'm going to bring my mic blend all the way to mic two totally taking mic one one out of the path. Now, I can either play my guitar and set this level, but what I actually do is I usually use these DIs. Now, the thing about this, these are very hot. So I actually play these. And I basically set on my microphone preamp that is capturing the mic on the amp, I set it so that these are optimal levels. This is what the capture is expecting to get. Now, this is very different than that input level. This is going to affect the final outcome. So we want to make sure this is set properly. Alternatively to that, I can also use the live input. Now, if I was using my lower output Strat, You can see I also get the same kind of range, so I'm good to go on that and I can hit next. This is where we are going to actually capture now. So it asks us to set our listening level and then we're gonna go through the capturing process. So unfortunately, my audio dropped out on Cubase as I started this, but I had just basically described to you the difference between using default or advanced training. Now, I chose default for this. Uh, you have fast, which is going to be for older computers. It's going to be much less accurate. We have default, which is what I chose. I can do default in about three and a half minutes. When I first started working with Tonex way back, I actually ha did not have an NVIDIA GPU you. And when you don't, the training times are quite a bit longer. Default were about an hour plus, whereas advanced were nine and a half hours. I believe it was really kind of awful. But when I upgraded to a new NVIDIA based GPU, I can now do these default trainings in about three and a half minutes and advanced in about 15 and a half to 16. The audio examples you're going to hear later in this video are actually going to all be done at advanced, as are all of my captures that I have up on my 
website. I have used default on some situations where I found the sound of the default was more accurate, and that can happen. But for the most part, now I think we're at a point where we can use advanced and be good to go. So the audio examples later in this video will all be using advanced so that we can get a proper comparison to the real world amp. So you can see it says your tone model is now ready. Move to the next step to review your tone model. All right, I hit next. Now it's giving me audio setup and rig connections, uh, buffer size of your audio interface. Before testing your new tone model, review your audio settings first. Check that your monitors and instrument are connected according to the schematic below. With your live rig connected, you'll be able to compare it against your tone model. So I have things set up just the way I need it, which was the same as I set it up going in. Now that I come to tone model review, I can go back and forth between testing the new tone model, either with these audio signals, Now I don't have really high quality audio being captured here. I just can't have that set up for this video, but you get the idea. Or I could click here and just plug my live input in. Listen to the real rig. Or the tone model. We can also fine tune the gain of your tone model. Uh, this setting will be saved with your tone model. So if you felt that it was slightly under gained, you could crank this up. It is pretty subtle, um, but we'll leave that just at the default setting for now. We'll hit next. Now we get to choose a skin. So I'm gonna come down here and choose something like a Silver Jubilee. The amp I was capturing today is actually my brand new Lurkst Omega hand-wired amp, which is Alex Lifeson's new signature model. And I have a whole new set of tone models available for that at my website. I'll play you the demo video on the way out once we're done our discussion today. The link is below to those and it's a really killer amp. So I'll choose that skin. I come over here and I say JS Tone and I can basically put keywords in, I could tag this with a description. You get to see my horrible typing. Uh, enter amp name. Right, and some of these are necessary. You do have to put a type so it's a drive sound. You'll see the ones that say optional are actually optional, but this is channel two on this amp. Uh, I don't need to comment on it. Uh, it is also a Lurkst Omega cabinet and it's a 212 and I can put the microphone in that I chose which is an Royer R10 and any other comments or outboard gear I can put in there I go save and go to player you'll see my new tone is right here ready to go and now I can mess around with it and we have a really wonderful tone model that is going to sound incredible now the next question is this because I did things different, because I captured this to work in a much lower instrument input level, does that retain the accuracy of working with the way that IK suggests? That's the big question. We're going to prove that right now. Okay, so here we are over in Cubase, and I want to show you now that whether you use the method I showed you today or whether you use the method that is suggested during the process of creating a tone model, you're going to get eerily accurate results. The only difference is if you follow the method that is suggested as you go through the Tonex capturing process, you're going to always have to be cranking your input level very high instead of calibrating it how I have talked about ad nauseum and just setting it one time and leaving it alone, which works beautifully. So what I have here is three tracks. So I took my guitar, I put it into my splitter, which I've tested over and over again. I've talked about this in other videos. What you put into this is what you get out of it. I fed one of those to my real guitar amp so I could capture the same performance. Because if you're, if you're comparing tones with different performances, the different performance is going to skew what you think you're hearing the differences might be. Uh, so if there really aren't any differences, the different performance will make it seem like it is. So what I've done here is I've basically captured three tracks right here, and this is the exact same performance. These are DI'd tracks, so let me just do this. I'm going to get rid of the instances of Tonex I have on there, and let's just listen to this first track right here, and we'll come over to here. That's just the DI captured from the level that I always work at on the instrument and put on my interface. If I 
solo this that you'll see that's identical. Then I captured that same performance, but going into the exact same chain that I captured this tone model on uh, with Tonex. And this is an advanced capture. So this is the real amp. Keep in mind, this is not a Tonex capture. This is not any sort of capture. This is literally my guitar plugged into my amp. That's what it sounds like. Now, you will get the tiniest bit of room reverb on that simply because I am in a room recording it. So what I did on the Tonex tone models here is I, I volume matched these on the output and I also added just the tiniest dab of reverb. You'll see a mix of three and time of 1.5, just so that they're not so bone dry and there won't be such a difference between the room reverb and that, even though it's not going to be the exact same reverb. But it's so subtle, it's not even going to be noticeable. Anyways, these two, as long as these two have the same thing, then it's going to be equal. So you might ask what I'm doing here. Well, what I've done is, one, I have a capture I made of this same chain of low-level input and one high-level input. So the high-level input one is expecting a higher level of input. So this would be captured in the way that is suggested while we're making a tone X tone model. This one is a low level input, which is gonna be expecting a much lower level input. To be specific, that setting that I had where I send a zero dBU signal into my audio interface is going to read as minus 11 dBFS. So 11 dBU of headroom. We have this one, which is going to sound the way that I want it to sound, and this one here, which is gonna sound under gained. Because what I had to do is I had to boost my level going in to make this one up to where Tonex told me it was okay. Then I had to go to my reamp out and bring that down. So I had to boost 11 dB on the input to get an acceptable, and I put that in air quotes, from what Tonex was telling me, an acceptable level, but then I had to go to my reamp chain, which I already had calibrated on the way out, I had to cut it by 11. That is the way that is suggested to do it. That's gonna be this capture, and this is the way that I do it, where I set my level once going in, match it coming back out, and then I make my capture. Which one's gonna be more accurate? I've heard people suggest that, if you do it the way I'm suggesting, that the model is not gonna be as dynamic, that if we roll our guitar volume back, that it's not gonna clean up the same way. So what I've done now is, as we see up here, this is going to be the high level input one, or as Tonex suggests, this is gonna be the low level or how I like to do it. I captured a performance of that riff with the guitar on full, a performance of it with the guitar on five and a half, six, and a performance of it with the guitar on around two and a half to hear how these clean up and react. You can see that by these waveforms, right? Here we have a fairly healthy signal. Here it gets much less. And here it's way down there. Does it still react the same as the amp? Well, let's listen. So this again is the real amp. When I solo this, this is going to be the tone model that I captured of the same amp done in the manner that I have shown in this video. This is going to be the tone model done in the manner that Tonex suggests as you go through it. So let's just zoom in here and we'll take a listen first to the real amp. Now here's the tone model I created with my method. Now here's the tone model created the way that the Tonex app suggests. Far under gained because this is expecting 11 dB more input gain to hit the front of it. So what I've done with Tonex here is I've put it in post position so that if I raise the gain on the channel, it's gonna hit the front of this harder. So if I come in here and boost this by 11 dB, you'll see now they're gonna sound the same. Real amp. Tonex tone model boosted 11 dB. And the way that I did it with no boost. So let's come right down to just a couple chord hits. I really like to do this so that we get any other variables out of the way. So we'll just listen to the real amp here on a couple chord hits. Here's my tone model in comparison. You'll see it when this is soloed. Now let's listen without that 11 dB boost. So as this would be captured up here without boosting that level up. it's far under gain. But if I boost this back up that 11 dB, it 
it sounds the same again. Now, what's interesting about this? Let's get rid of this 11 dB, okay? And this is why none of this is even an issue. Because people say, well, what if I'm playing a tone model that IK made that's expecting a higher uh, input level, and which mine right here that I made with their method is, watch what happens with the gain control. Problem, problem solved. I just boost that gain up and then I can actually save that as a preset so that it's always going to have that boosted gain. So if I go down here to one of IK's particular tone models and I'm using the lower level of input gain than it's, you know, quote unquote expecting, I can simply just raise that gain. Now we don't know what they captured it at. We don't know what level. We haven't been told that. It doesn't matter. It's okay. People make far too big a deal about this. It doesn't need to be so complicated. It really doesn't. If you play plug into one of these and it sounds great, who cares if it was exactly eerily accurate to what their intention was? If it's a great tone, it's a great tone. If you feel like it needs to be boosted up or if somebody else uses it, then, you know, going from the default setting up to, let's say, 8.9, 8.8 is going to be similar to boosting it up about 11 dB on that input. So it's really that simple. It doesn't have to be more complicated. What happens when we start rolling the guitar volume back, though? Let's go in and we'll go to this where the guitar volume is back around five and a half and we'll listen to the real amp and then I'll solo out the other two. So you can see how it's cleaned up. Capture in the way I use it has cleaned up perfectly as well. Let's just go back here. And the other thing is I could come into this input level on Tonex app itself and raise that 11 dB. Or on the pedal, I could do that with the gain control or the global input trim. But I run my global input trim. It would work perfectly with my captures at minus three on the pedal. Then you can use your gain control to do whatever you want with it after. But now, here's what we have. Pretty much identical, even with the guitar volume rolled off. But let's see how it goes if we go even further down. Here's the real amp. So they all sound, as far as I'm concerned, identical. But here's the problem. If we didn't have this 11 dB boost here, The method I use is going to work beautifully and match the real life amp because I have calibrated my instrument input level going in and my reamp level coming back out to match the real world. And that's exactly what I was talking about in that video I did almost a year ago, suggesting to folks to not keep turning the level up to clipping and backing it off. All right, so there you have it. I know that video is long. Please don't leave comments telling me it was long. I warned you it was long. Things are timestamped below. Yes, I repeated myself a number of times in there for emphasis and I think it's very important. This isn't a video that doesn't interest you and if you're working your own way, I can't stress enough like I put in the disclaimer in the beginning, if you're working in a way that works for you that's different than my way, please carry on. I have no animosity towards you. We can still be friends. We can just choose to work different ways and it's okay. Okay, these discussions get far too heated and people start attacking, taking things others say out of context, twisting words, and it doesn't do anybody any good. So I've said my piece on it. I'm not going to talk about this anymore, but I really do hope that that video today lays out how I work, lays out what I feel is the proper way to make tone models and something that I've had great success and had many people tell me they absolutely love what I do. And I'm super happy to have so much support for the folks who do utilize my tone models. I really do appreciate that. Today, I'm going to leave you with the demo for my new Lifechild Ultimate Tone Model Collection, which is based off of my new Lurkst Omega Handwired Tube Amp. Through its matching 212 Lurkst Omega cabinet, I hope you enjoy this, and I really thank you for bearing with me through this in-depth discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. So thanks so much for tuning in. Please like the video. Please share this one with anybody you think will get some use or enjoyment out of watching it. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content sent out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you so much again for sharing your time with me and enjoy the music on the way out. Ciao for now.